In the last part of this week, we're going to talk about repetitive DNA. Repetitive DNA can either be very highly repetitive, repetitive or it can be middly repetitive. And we're going to talk about some different examples of these. So repetitive DNA in terms of satellite DNA, satellite DNA is going to be very highly repetitive and it consists of short repeated sequences. It is found in some heterochromatin regions, such as in the centromeres or the telomere regions of chromosomes. And as we just discussed, these are areas that are not going to be containing genes. Um, they're just going to be very long or short repetitive sequences. And these repetitive sequences are not found in prokaryotes, just the eukaryotes. Remember, the prokaryotes aren't going to have centromeres. They're also not going to have telomeres. We can also find some moderately repetitive DNA, and this includes several different things. It can include variable number tandem repeats, or VNTRs, and these are going to be variations that are used for things like DNA fingerprinting. And this is used for things like paternity tests or forensic cases and things like that. Many satellites are going to be clusters of these VNTRs. And microsatellites are going to consist of short tandem repeats, or STRs. Uh, there's some other types that we can find, and we call them signs and lines. The first are short interspersed elements, and the second are long interspersed elements. However, these are going to be dispersed randomly kind of throughout the genome, rather than the tandemly repeated uh, the regions that we might find, for example, at the centromeres or the telomeres. And so they're going to be randomly throughout the genome. And they consist of much of our genome. Over a one-third of the human genome consists of these regions. Uh, these are transposable elements. That means they can kind of jump from region to region. And they are generated via an RNA intermediate. And thus we refer to them as retrotransposons. And really, looking at all this repetitive DNA, only a very small portion relatively of the eukaryotic genome, maybe 2 to 10 percent, actually constitutes protein coding genes. It used to be thought that many of these regions were so quote unquote junk DNA, but we now know that many of these regions form very important functions. There are also a large number of single copy non-coding regions, some of which we could call pseudogenes. So maybe they're DNA sequences that look like a gene. However, they've gone, undergone maybe significant mutational alterations, either insertions or deletions, and they are not actively being transcribed. And so you're never going to get a protein product from this. So for this week, what I would like you to do is, uh, for the discussion forums, you can pick one or both of these parts. Part one is the end of the chapter 11 on page 289, where it talks about uh, telomeres. And the second part is at the end of chapter 12 on page 310, where it talks about some things like genome variants or copy number variants and structural variations in the human genome and how that might be related to different disease conditions. So read over these end of the chapter sections and you can discuss some of them in the discussion forum this week. So please don't forget to also complete the quiz this week as well as the homework on mastering genetics. Also, please work on your student projects. I will be sending you emails later this week to confirm your project topic and help you with a rough outline if you've had some trouble getting started with the project.